Welcome, we're at the National Portrait Gallery and it's only just opened. Yes, now when I say it's only just opened, in fact, we put this video up on a Sunday and it opened first thing on Thursday morning to the public. And you know what? We were there to bring it to you. So here are the doors closed and very shortly we'll be going through them. But do look closely at these doors. When the camera focuses in, you'll see these are all sketches and uh, paintings or pictures that have been put on the doors done by Tracy Emin. Now, if you don't know who Tracy Emin is, just have a quick Google and then look at her biggest piece of art, which was an unmade bed. I'm not saying anything. This is the Natural Portrait Gallery. It's all about people. The National Portrait Gallery has been closed for the last three years for renovations. And whilst they've had it closed down, they've also done a lot to some of the paintings. And we're going to show you some of those very, very shortly. Now, it's situated just behind Leicester Square and also Trafalgar Square. So it's right there near the National Gallery. On display across their three floors up and a couple of floors down, they've got something like 1,100 different paintings and pictures of their 100,000 gallery collection, which is quite incredible. But we're going to start off here in this room. And this is an original painting. Yes, it's an Elizabeth I, and it dates back to the late 1500s. Yes, this is an original painting, which has been restored during this time as well, which is incredible, like a lot. Now, you've got to start here. This is up on the third floor, and it is the Tudor Collection. This is Queen Mary I, and this is the only surviving child of Henry VIII and Catherine of Aragon, and she became the first Queen of England aged 37 after the death of her half-brother, Edward VI. Here we got two Queen Elizabeth I, that's the one on the left and the one in the center in this beautiful frame. And the one on the right is Mary Queen of Scots. Now, when you look around, we're gonna give you a panoramic view now, this room is quite dark. And the reason for that is to maintain the quality of the paintings that they've got here, which of course have been really well conserved during the closed period. And it's incredible to think that these are the original paintings. So there we had Catherine Parr, and that was from about 1545. And you just got to look at these Elizabeth paintings again. Just look at the frame going round. Absolutely incredible. Now, what I love is even back in the Tudor times, they experimented. And this, look at this painting. So from that angle, it looks normal. From this angle, wow, doesn't that look different? This is King Edward VI, and he became king at nine and died at only the age of 15. Now in this, this is Henry VIII and his father, and this is a massive picture. Now, what's really interesting is, actually it's probably more of a sketch, but then we go to his different wives. Of course, there you've got Anne Boleyn. And this next one is Jane Seymour. And here you've got Catherine Parr. Right, we're going to leave the Tudor room and this is where the whole gallery sort of brightens up because here on the third floor, as you can see, it really is brought to life with the light that's coming through the windows up above. But it really does show these paintings off beautifully. Now, I'm not going to point out every single painting uh, because there are various apps that you can use and shine it on the uh, screen and it'll tell you what they are. But I will point out one or two to you as we're going through. For me, I think this third floor, by the way, that's King Charles I. Uh, but this third floor really is absolutely amazing and it's just incredible to be able to think that you can stand there with these paintings that were done in the 1500s and actually there's nothing between you and the actual painting you are that close to them yet in some galleries you can go and actually you've got a sort of, of a distance of about 15 meters away and there it is over in the end wall so if you're coming to the UK if you're coming to London do make sure you get to the National Portrait Gallery because it's just one of those amazing places to come and see. So as looking around at these amazing portraits, this is the first one that was ever acquired by the gallery. And of course, it is William Shakespeare. And it's probably the only portrait of Shakespeare painted from his life. The National Portrait Gallery describes itself as a gallery of people for people, and it tells the story basically of Britain through the lives of those that have shaped or are shaping the nation, its culture and identity. 
Sometimes it's really difficult to get a grasp on how big these paintings are. And believe you me, some of them are absolutely massive, which is why in this piece, I didn't cut out the individual who's just about to walk in front of it. Just gives you an idea of how big this is. By the way, this is a painting of the Houses of Parliament from the 1700s. And here in the middle, you've got King Charles II. Here, you've got the King William and you've got Queen Mary, and you're gonna see a lot more about them coming up very, very soon when we cover Kensington Palace. Right, here's a guide. So the third floor is 1300 to 1850, the second 1850 to 2000, and then as you go down, it gets more modern. The bottom few floors are just sort of meeting areas. Oh, by the way, this is Charles Dickens. So we've now moved down to the second floor and we're gonna be looking at some of the people down here. Here we have Emily Bronte, and this is from a piece of a painting which was just found, which is absolutely incredible. But have a look at this one of the complete Bronte sisters. And can you see where it's all sort of been folded? It was found on the top of a wardrobe. Incredible, what a find. It really is a mix of people in this painting. Right in the middle there, that lady is Florence Nightingale. Now, if you're watching this from another country and think, oh, who was Florence Nightingale? Google, go for it, or alternatively a different type of search engine, but it'll bring it up. So here's a couple of tips for you if you're visiting to the museum. Right, first of all, you can get a guide from the Natural Portrait Gallery, which you can order in advance when you get your ticket. That is an absolute must, because that'll help you with some of the things. Obviously, you've got a lot of the info by the side of the pictures. Also, something else that you can do, which will help you take through some of the paintings in more detail, and it covers some of the really, really popular ones, is you can download an app. Now, when you get there, the biggest thing I would recommend is that you pick up a map, because in that, it gives you a lot more detail of the app. And also, if you're there for only for a short period of time, and you really wanna make use of the time that you're there, it will give you some guided ideas of the sort of things that you can see within a short time span. And that is either from half an hour, an hour or two hours. And to be quite honest, I did the whole gallery myself and included stopping, having a good look and also doing filming. And I was probably here for about 90 minutes. And then I went to a fantastic cafe after, but that's here in the building and we're still gonna show you that yet. This lady in the middle is Beatrix Potter, yes. Now, very recently, someone put in the comments about Virginia Woolf. And when I saw this painting, I thought, I've got to cover this. So this is Virginia Woolf that was painted by her sister, Vanessa Bell. I really hope you're enjoying the artwork that's on display here at the newly opened National Portrait Gallery. Now, if you're coming here, really do recommend you get tickets in advance because it's gonna be really, really busy, especially during peak times. And guess how much the tickets are? There are fiver, how cheap's that? So as you saw in the guide to the floors, it's not just about old paintings. You've got pictures which are from, well, the 2000s even. And actually some of these are worth taking a stop and taking a look at, especially some of the musical artists which you may well know and love yourself. And here is a bit of a wall with a collection of those. And we'll have a deeper look and just go around closer of those and just see how many you recognize from years gone by. Now, a number of these will be very UK centric, so you may not know who they are, but it'd be worth finding out. So if you have any questions about who any of these are, just let us know in the comments down below. Some of them, like number 10, are an absolute giveaway. Interestingly enough, the gentleman on the right, Paul McCartney, has actually got an exhibition which opens here in the next week with photographs from his days in the Beatles. 
Now, as I said, Sir Paul McCartney's got his exhibition going on and other exhibitions that they'll put on, there will be additional charges. And I did look actually the entrance into that is 20 pounds alone. So you do need to take that into account if you're going there and you're booking tickets in advance. But as I said earlier, for a fiver, just to come and see all the stuff that I'm showing you so far is an absolutely brilliant price. So if you're loving the video here at the National Portrait Gallery, do us a big favor, will you? Give us a thumbs up to show that you love it. And also that helps us out massively on YouTube. This helps spread this video out to more people so that they can love London as well. And if you haven't subscribed, you know where we are. Go on, hit the button. Okay, we go from pop royalty from the UK to another type of royalty. Now, I actually remember when this was done because there was a big thing about it at the time and this painting of Princess Diana. And then after looking at this fantastic painting, it's got to be. Let's go to William and Kate. Now here, you've got a real mixture of up-to-date photos and paintings. There you go, you've got the King there, you've got uh, Andy Murray, and further down, there's even a painting of Ed Sheeran. Right, this is just one of the cafes. There's also a restaurant, and there's a brand new restaurant that's gonna open up on the top floor as well within the next month. So that is well worth a visit. Right, back to the paintings, Queen Victoria. How regal does this look? Now, if you're loving the paintings and the pictures that we're showing you here, why not head to our website, londonvisited.co.uk, and have a look at some of the pictures we have on there that you can buy for under three pounds, and that goes to help support the channel. So if you fancy taking a look at that, it's londonvisited.co.uk, and then go to photos. Now here's a word of warning, and it's from my learning. I didn't read the map properly. So actually, first time round, I missed these rooms completely, which is an absolute travesty because the paintings in here are amazing. And also, you don't often get the feeling you're being watched as you're walking around these rooms. So one of the things I really suggest you do, go around, have a great look, then go and have a cuppa and a bite to eat, and then come back again and have a look. Because I missed this one, Oliver Cromwell, which I really wanted to see. But thankfully, I came back and then found it. Now, accessibility-wise, everything is easy to get around. There's lifts going to all floors, which makes it really, really easy. But some of the architecture here is absolutely incredible. And this is just one of the stairwells that I took up. And actually, a lot of people miss this area because not only is it beautiful, but just look at these stairways going off into the different parts of the National Portrait Gallery. Absolutely beautiful. So that's the National Portrait Gallery. What did you think of it? It's brand new, it's just opened, so it's here to stay for a long, long time. Is it something that you fancy going to on one of your trips to London? Let us know in the comments down below. And also, what I'd really love to know is, which was your favorite painting or picture in the whole collection that we showed you? Now, we haven't shown you everything, but what have you seen you absolutely loved? And also, who do you think was missing from British life? Also, let us know that in the comments down below. Now, the National Portrait Gallery is just around the corner from Trafalgar Square, where the National Gallery is, which is another fantastic place to visit with amazing masterpieces sitting there hanging in the gallery. And I put a link to that video up in the top right-hand corner. So if you click on that, I'll see you in there.